Hey guys, welcome back. We have our Upset Alerts video prepared for you today. This is going to be for week 9 of the 2024 college football season. We have 7 specific games for our top 25 matchups that we are going to discuss where the favored team, where the Vegas favorite, needs to be on Upset Alert. Now, I'm not saying that these teams are going to lose, but there is a high probability that they could potentially lose here. So it's extra games that we want to keep our eye on. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you have any comments about these games or anything else, drop them below and I will respond. So this is seven games that we need to have on our upset alert meter. We're going to predict who's going to win, who's going to lose, what the final score will be, and we'll also go over the money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders. If you are a football fan, if you are a sports fan, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can follow along with us. The very first game that stood out to me, it was pretty hard getting it down to just seven games, but I don't want to have 15 games on here. The very first game that stood out to me is going to be our Friday night matchup. At 10.30 p.m. on CBS, we have number 17, Boise State, 5-1, and one, playing 6-1 and one UNLV. Right now, Boise is the favorite, 62.1% chance to win this game. They are 3.5-point favorites, very close spread. The over-under is 64.5. Boise, they are led by Matson at the quarterback position, closing in on 1,300 yards, 12 picks, 2 touchdowns. UNLV... Obviously, Sluka left the team due to the NIL issue. They brought in Williams, and he has hit the ground running. He can throw. He can run. He's closing in on 900 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, 2 picks. What makes this game a potential upset alert game is both teams have top 10 offenses. Whenever you have teams that can score like that, this game could turn into a shootout easily. Shootout means whoever has the ball last could potentially win the game. The game could be in their hands. They just have to go down the field, score, and they take the game. There's a lot riding on this game. Right now, Boise State is the highest group of five team. So they're in the driver's seat to make the final 12 and make the playoffs. If UNLV beats Boise State, they would be in the in the a driver's seat. So there's a lot hinging on this game. There's a playoff position potentially hinging on this game right here. Boise State... They, they have a top five offense. They're averaging 46.8 points a game. They throw for 237.3. They run for 289.8, a top 10 rushing team in the nation. They love to keep the ball on the ground, suck up clock, keep the ball out of the other team's hands. They're giving up 26.2 points a game. Their biggest weakness is they give up 308.3 passing yards per game. That is awful. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for UNLV to vertically push the ball down the field, and they're giving up 105.7 on the ground. For UNLV, they also have a top 10 offense. They're averaging 43.6 points a game, throwing for 189.4. Like I mentioned, there's going to be opportunities for you to hit those targets deep here. And they are also have a top 20 rushing game, rushing for 251.4 yards per game. Both teams love to run the ball. This game is going to be decided in the trenches. Who's able to run the ball more successfully? And they're giving up 22.6 points a game and 299.4 of the year. So they also have a pretty bad secondary. Both teams are going to be able to find targets down the field. Who's going to hit them? Who's going to run the ball the best? For Boise State, their secret weapon, their Swiss Army knife, is Ashton Gentry, the number one guy for the Heisman right now, the best running back by far in the nation, closing in on 1,300 yards on the ground through six games. He's on pace for 2,600 yards this season. He has 18 touchdowns. They have Madsen. They have Cooper. But all eyes will be on Gentry. Not just can they win this game, take their position for that group of five, he could also cement himself as the Heisman front runner this week. A lot riding on here, but Boise State needs to be prepared for you and LV. Williams passing, running the ball, and white receiving. Lots of weapons there. Could be a shootout, but I have Boise ultimately winning this one 38 to 28, covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. And then one of our Saturday games on ABC at 12 p.m., number 12, Notre Dame, 6 and 1. They've been. Playing very well since they lost that upset win to NIU. They'll be playing number 24 Navy coming in at 6-0. It's a ranked on ranked. Whenever you're playing another ranked team, you definitely need to take them serious. Notre Dame needs to be taking 
everybody's serious. They've already lost to NIU. They have the upset of the year so far. They don't want two of them. If they drop a second game, there's a high possibility here that they're then going to miss the playoffs. Right now, they're perfectly situated. They have a pretty easy schedule going forward, but they have to play Navy here. They have to get these wins. They have to win out. They have to finish 11-1 and to make the playoffs to cement themselves in a playoff position. If they go 10-2, and two, they have no conference championship because they're an independent. So they'll have one less game than all of those other teams. That's going to hurt them when it comes down to that final poll. So safe bet is just a win out, and you will cement yourself with a trip to the playoffs. Right now, Notre Dame is the favorite. They come in here. They have a 91.1% chance to win this game. They are 13.5-point favorites. That's a very big spread for a top 25 on top 25 game. And the, and the over-under here is 51 and a half. They have Riley Leonard at the quarterback position, closing it on 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, three picks. Never been a fan of Leonard since he was at Duke. A 55% completion guy for his career. He cannot throw the ball accurately in any way whatsoever. But what he can do is he can run, he can scramble, he can extend plays with his legs. He does keep his eye down the field. That's a good thing. You have Leonard, you have Love. Keep the ball on the ground, run it, suck up clock, keep the ball out of Navy's hands. But when Navy has their possessions, they have Horbath closing in on 900 yards, 10 touchdowns, only one pick. Navy's very good at not turning the ball over. They run that triple option and they can throw the ball. That's an added weapon they have is they're not just a run happy team. They're very successful at running, but they can also push the ball down the field. Notre Dame, they have Freeman, they have Golden, they have Den Brock. They have great coordinators. They have an elite level defense, but they are pretty banged up on the offensive line coming into this game. They're averaging 34.6. They throw for 197. They run for 209.6. That's the key is Notre Dame's running game and their defense only giving up 11.9 points a game. Navy, they're averaging 44.8. They have a top 10 defense. They can score with Notre Dame, especially if they have any success running the ball. It's definitely going to open up the game plan here. Notre Dame has to be prepared to get into a shootout in this matchup. I'm not saying that that will happen, but you're playing a team that averages 45 a game and they're a top 25 team. So you got to be prepared there is the possibility that you might need to score 30 to 40 points this game. They and uh, For Navy, they throw for 164.3. They're running for 274.8. That's top 10 in the nation. Solid defense giving up 19.7. Horvath closing in on 900 yards passing, closing in on 700 yards rushing. He has 20 total touchdowns right now. 10 rushing touchdowns, 10 passing touchdowns. The guy is elite right now. Notre Dame, they have Leonard, they have Love, they have Collins. I have Notre Dame's defense making the difference ultimately here in the fourth quarter. You might be able to run on them, but can you do it for four straight quarters? I have Notre Dame winning 33-20, to not covering the spread, going with the over. And then at 12 p.m. on the Big Ten Network, 4-3 and three Washington. They'll be playing number 13, Indiana, undefeated, 7-0. Indiana has a 83.9% chance to win this game. They are 6.5-point favorites here. The over-under is 54.5. Indiana, props to them, props to Signetti. They've came out of nowhere this season. Great team, number 2 offense in the nation. They can throw. They can run. Their biggest issue, the reason they're on upset alert here is their quarterback, Rook, Went down this past week, hurt his hand. Jackson will be filling in. He did just fine filling in for Rourke last week. But still, Rourke was having a great season. He will definitely be missed here. He was closing in on 2,000 passing yards, 15 touchdowns, 3 picks. That's a guy who was really productive in a very physical, defensively focused Big Ten. He was succeeding at the highest level, got in this team to the number two offense. You can't not have him play and think that you're just not going to miss any type of beat. That's a massive loss. Jackson will be just fine, but Washington's going to test you. They have a top 20 defense. They're not lighting things up on offense, but they can try to keep this game within a one possession game. If you keep it condensed, there's a possibility that you just get the ball last. You go down the field. You win the game. They have the veteran experienced quarterback to do that. They have Will Rogers closing in on 1,900 yards, 13 touchdowns, two picks. They average 24.1 points a game. They throw for 308.3. They run for 158.1. So they're averaging just under 500 yards of offense per game. Their big issue is turnovers and not being able to punch it in in the red zone. Indiana, 
great defense. They're going to try to keep them to field goals. They're perfectly fine with them only getting field goals. A couple touchdowns here. Can Washington make the difference? Can they get down to the red zone? Can they punch it in for touchdowns? Turn drives into points. Their defense giving up 17 points a game. For Indiana, like I mentioned, the number two offense in the entire nation, 48.7 points a game. They throw for 316.6. They run for 202.4. They're averaging 520 yards every game. And a top 10 defense giving up 13.7. Only 81.9 on the ground. They're going to force Washington to have to beat them vertically through the air, which raises the possibility if you get pressure on Rodgers, you might be able to generate some turnovers for Washington. They have Rodgers, they have Coleman closing in on 700 yards rushing, they have Jackson closing in on 600 yards receiving, and for Indiana, they have Ellison closing in on 600 yards on the ground, they have Surratt closing in on 600 yards. I originally had Washington winning it due to Rourke being out, but I think what's going to make the difference is Washington giving up 143.3 rushing yards on the ground, Indiana averages 202.4. Indiana is going to feed the running backs, keep the ball on the ground, cut down on the turnovers. If you need the third down play, that's what Jackson's there for. Indiana wins a close one with their backup, 24 to 20. They do not cover the spread. I'm going with the under. The next game we're looking at at 3:30 p.m. on ESPN, number 11 BYU undefeated 7 and 0. They're actually the underdogs. They're the only ranked team here, but they're the underdog on the road versus the three and four UCF Knights. UCF's three and four, they are the Vegas favorites. They have a 54.5% chance to win this game, two and a half point favorites. The over under here is 55 and a half. So this is an under so this is an upset alert for both of these teams. It's an upset alert for BYU because they're number eleven and they're an underdog to an unranked three and four team. That's not very good. And UCF is the favorite here. They're the underdog, the potential upset here, because BYU as the higher-ranked team, technically the better team, can easily beat them. Right now, BYU, they live off of turnovers. If they get turnovers, they get the short field, they turn that into points consistently. However, if UCF doesn't turn the ball over, that's going to put BYU in a tough place because it's going to force them to have to drive the length of the field, get down to the red zone, Turn that in the points. They don't have a great running game. Their leading rusher is their quarterback, and he's not rushing for very much. They're banged up at the running back position. Will Retzlaff be able to take control of this game? He's closing in on 1,700 yards, 16 touchdowns, 7 picks. A lot of turnovers. They average 34.9. They throw for 249.7. They run for 156.6. Solid defense, giving up 19 points a game. But it's the fact that they generate so many turnovers. But if you rely on that too much... It can bite you if your defense doesn't get those turnovers. For UCF, they've been kind of shuffling quarterbacks, KJ Jefferson, Brown. We don't even know who's going to be playing this game. I don't know that it necessarily matters because neither of them have been playing particularly well. But one thing they do have, they are one of the top 10 rushing teams in the nation. Right now, they're averaging 31.3. They throw for 201. They run for 280.3. They're averaging almost 500 yards of offense, but only 31 points because they also, once they get down to the red zone, they can't punch it in because they have no passing game. That puts a lot of pressure on R.J. Harvey. He's a top 10 running back in the country, closing in on 900 yards. But when you get down to the red zone, if you can't pass, that doesn't open up the play action. So that so that lets the defense stack the line. Thus, he's not able to get it into the end zone. And they have Hudson closing in on 600 yards. BYU, Retzlaff closing in on 1,700, closing in on 300 on the ground. And they have Lassiter closing in on 500. I have BYU avoiding the upset, giving the favored UCF Knights the upset, winning this one 33-26, the spread not being covered. And I'm going with the over. And the next potential upset game at 3.30 p.m. on ABC, a ranked-on-ranked matchup, number 21, Missouri, 6-1. Their only loss to the Aggies, solid team, top 20 roster, top 20 offense, top 20 defense. They'll be playing number 15, Alabama, coming in here at 5-2. Alabama is the favorite. They have an 82.2% chance to win this game. The spread keeps going up yesterday. It was 13. Now it's 17. They're 17-point favorites over under. Here is 51 and a half. The reason Alabama's on upset alert is they've already dropped two games. They got throttled by Vanderbilt. They were dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage, on defense, on offense. They could not get the Commodores off the field. They had the ball for 40 minutes that game. 
Alabama's offense was completely kept on the sideline. How did Alabama respond? They still haven't played well since then. They have to get this team back on track. Kalen DeBoer has his work cut out for him. This is the number one overall roster according to ESPN. They are not playing like it right now. It begins in the trenches. They're not disciplined. They're not getting pushed on either side of the ball. They need to generate a consistent running game. They need a 1,000-yard running back right now. Right now, Mizzou, you don't want to sleep on them. Very talented team. They won 11 games last season. They have the playmakers. Cook should be fully healthy this game. He's closing in on 1,600 yards, seven touchdowns, one pick. They average 31.7. They throw for 261.7. They run for 172.3. And a top 15 defense right now, only giving up 15.6 points a game. That could test Alabama. Alabama lives on the long play, the quick strike. If you keep their offense off the field, run the ball, control the clock, and if your defense gets just enough stops, you can beat Alabama here. Right now, the Crimson Tide, they average 38.1. They throw for 276.6. They run for 164.3. Their defense is giving up 21.3 points a game. Like I was saying, they can't get pushed on the line of scrimmage. Their defensive line is getting torched every single game. People can run on them. They're not getting pressure on the opposing team's quarterback. This is the worst statistical Alabama defense since 2004. Two decades. So they have massive strides that they need to take going forward. Mizzou, they have Cook, Noel, Weiss Jr., Burden. They have probably the better skill position players right now, but Alabama has the overall better roster. They just need to play like it. They have Milrow, they have Miller, they have Ryan Williams. Expect one long, deep touchdown pass for him. I have Alabama pulling this one out, playing a little better, winning this one 34-20, not covering the spread, going with the over, and they're still getting the win. And our second to last one on NBC at 7.30 p.m., number three, Penn State, 6-0, undefeated. Sitting perfectly in the Big Ten right now. They'll be playing 5-2 and two Wisconsin. The reason Penn State is on upset alert here is you don't want to sleep on the Badgers. They've been playing really good the last three, four weeks. The reason they've been playing well is because they've gotten back to their roots. They've gotten back to lining it up dominating at the line of scrimmage, running the ball downhill. That's what Wisconsin used to be known for, was the running game. They kind of got away from that. They got a little too pass-heavy with Phil Longo's offense, but they've gone back to their roots. Props to Luke Fickle. He has his team playing really well, playing really disciplined, but Penn State's the favorite. Six and a half point favorites, 70.1% chance to win this game. The over-under here is 47 and a half. Penn State, Drew Waller, James Franklin changed the offensive scheme. It has worked wonders so far for the offense. Drew Waller closing in on 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns, four picks. He had three picks versus the Trojans. Outside of that, he's played very clean his entire career at Penn State. They average 34.2. They throw for 277.2. They run for 201.2. They average just under 500 yards of offense. It's their running game that makes the difference. One of the best one-two running back punches. They have Allen. They have Singleton. They're going to line up. They're going to run downhill, try to dominate the line of scrimmage, try to suck up clock, keep the Badgers' run game off the field. This is probably going to be a lower-scoring game. Who's going to dominate the trenches? Penn State does have a top-10 defense, giving up 14.5 points a game. Wisconsin loves to run the ball. Penn State shuts the run down. That's their strength. They're only giving up 94.8 yards on the ground. It's strength on strength. Penn State's defensive line versus Wisconsin's offensive line. They have Locke filling in for TVD. He's average, He's closing in on 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns, five picks. They average 29 points a game. They throw for 219. They run for 194. They also have a top 20 defense. They only give up 17.6 points a game. For Penn State, they have Drew Waller, Singleton, Allen, Warren, Wisconsin. They have Locke. They have Walker closing in on 600 yards. And they have Anthony to the second. I have Penn State ultimately with the deeper, better running back room. The one-two punch that's able to get them the win in a close one. They win it 27-20. They cover the spread, but I'm going with the under just barely. And our final upset alert pick here is a really tough one. It's a really hard one to pick who's going to win this game because these teams are pretty equal at 7.30 p.m. on ABC number 8 LSU coming in at 6-1. and one. They've run six straight games since their loss to the Trojans. They'll be playing number 14, the Texas A&M Aggies. They're also 6-1. and one. They've won six straight games since their loss to Notre Dame. 
Right now, the Aggies, the lower-ranked team, are the favorites. A 52.8% chance to win this game. They are two and a half point favorites. The over/under here is 52 and a half. This game could go either way. This is a 50-50 game. Both teams are playing solid. Both teams are moving the ball on offense. Both teams are playing great defense right now. This is Brian Kelly versus Mike Elko. LSU, they have a top seven overall roster. They're deep, one of the best passing teams in the nation. They're led by Nussmeyer, closing in on 2,300 yards of the air, 18 touchdowns, six picks. They're playing solid football. They're running the ball a lot better recently, but it's their defense. Since last season, their defense has really improved. Props to Blake Baker for that. This team is tackling well. They're, they're top 10 in quarterback hurries, top 10 in sacks, getting a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Pressure on quarterbacks leads to mistakes. That leads to turnovers. They're averaging 34.1. They throw for 325.9. They run for 128.3. Their defense only giving up 20.6 points a game. But Mike Elko's Aggies, they live on the run. They live in the trenches. He wants a tough, physical team, disciplined team at the line of scrimmage. Their issue has been quarterback. Reed, Wegman, shuffling back and forth. Wegman's kind of Jekyll and Hyde. He plays a great game versus Missouri, follows that up with an awful game versus Mississippi State. Which version of Wegman shows up here? We don't know yet. We could get a sharpshooter. We could get someone who plays like a complete clown out there. That kind of is what makes this game somewhat questionable here. The Aggies are favored because of what they can do when he plays well. And with their running game, they average 31.4, throw for 192.6. They run for 218.6. That is elite in a physical SEC conference and a top 20 defense giving up 17.7 points a game. For the Aggies, they have Moss closing in on 700 yards on the ground. They're going to try to line up, run it down LSU's throat. Hopefully, Wegman plays a clean game for them. And they have Thomas at wide receiver for LSU. If this game turns into a shootout, that's where they live. That's where they've lived for the last few years. They're perfectly fine with that. They are comfortable with that. They have the playmakers on the corners to be able to handle any type of shootout, especially if they get the ball last. They have Lacey making big plays, Durham, Nussmeyer. I originally had the Aggies winning this one, but I ultimately went with LSU. I think it's their passing game. If they can keep Nussmeyer clean, keep him upright, he's going to be able to hit the targets. If they have the wide receivers, they play a clean Perfect game. They win this one 30 to 27. So I have the spread not being covered and I'm going with the over. So it's going to be an upset for the favor team, the Aggies. So that's our seven teams that are on upset alert for week nine of the 2024 college football season. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below and I will respond. Thank you.